Hi everyone, it's Chris Petri. I'm really glad you're here and welcome again. We're gonna have a lot of fun today. We're actually gonna um, sort of do a lot, a lot of different things just because uh, we had a really a lot of great um, questions and some um, great comments um, in the comments section of our videos the last uh, a few weeks or so. So I wanted to try to cover a lot of different um, uh, things today so I can sort of help people that are having questions with their um, paintings and their drawings and so forth. So um, I usually just stick with one sort of uh, theme when we're, when we're creating a video. But I thought this um, on this video we would cover a few different things. So it'll be a learning uh, experience. Let's have some fun with it. Okay, the first thing is you'll see here I have um, a painting I did. This could be like a card, like a gift card or something, occasional card. Uh, someone asked me about how to mat around uh, a painting um, to to get different effects. Let's say for a, like for an occasional card or something of that effect. So the thing with this is it's real simple. Um, you can buy different um, artist tape with different widths, so that they uh, different artist tapes come with different widths of uh, uh, for the tape itself. So. In this particular, um, let's say, style, I wanted to make a large border at the bottom. So the bottom of the watercolor paper is right here. So that's the bottom of the watercolor paper. And then obviously this is the border here where the painting is. So this is going to leave us a lot of room here where we can maybe do some script and things like that or some, you know, we could put in some lettering for like, let's say, a happy birthday or a happy New Year's, um, get well soon, whatever. You, you might have a little message you'd like to put onto this. Um, so you can share your artwork and actually it's a real positive thing too because you can create cards and, um, you know, people get really excited about the beauty of the card and, and it's also an actual, you know, gift from you, a personal gift that you can make. I do this all the time. I, I create cards all the time for, for friends and family and so forth. So here we have this card and we taped it really wide at the bottom. I use some really wide tape. I'm going to see if I can uh, locate my tape here. Um, let's see, here it is. So this is wide tape that I used for this. So I just cut a small piece and put the wide tape here. And then this is some thinner tape, and I use this thinner tape around the, these outside borders. And then what I did is I just created a painting. Very simple composition, you know, we did some uh, greens and yellows and, and uh, a little bit of shadowing colors with purples and blues in here. So this is sort of like a, maybe like a garden, you know, by the house and, you know, some uh, interesting um, plants and flowering, I think buds and flowers and things on here. And so this is what we get when we do this with a wide border here and a thinner border here. And you can see the border here is for this tape, tape is here. So we, we have about a half an inch here and a half inch here. And that's the same all the way around. So this is about a half inch all the way around here. And then on the bottom, we made it extra wide. So let's take a look and we'll peel off the tape and we try to be careful with the tape we try to when we take the tape off we use we do an angle like that this way we don't tear the paper it's good to use really good art quality artist tape if you can you can find that it's you can find find good artist tape online or at your local art store art supply store so I just carefully do it on a 45 degree angle like that to peel the tape Look at that, isn't that great? Now this can also work for, like if you wanna just create a painting and you wanna frame this and you wanna maybe do something a little bit larger, you do the same concept. The only thing is you just have to tape a little more. So you might have to go with two or three rows. So you might have to go with two or three rows of larger tape, or even you can tape a piece of paper underneath this, like a piece of printer paper, just so you don't splash on it and get any markings on your, on your white border of your paper. So essentially, you can create 
a really nice border on your paintings. Customizable to however you want the dimensions to be. And then you don't have to worry about uh, fussing over buying a mat or finding a mat for these. You can just um, create your own style matting on your paintings. And I've seen artists do this where they just take this and put this right into a frame and it's perfect. And then here, um, also, if you're, you know, you, if you're good at printing or script or you can buy lettering, they have lettering you can buy and stencils, but you can always just take a, a straight edge like this. And then we would just, uh, we would take a pencil and put a really super light line here just to give us a level line like that. And then we might say, you know, happy birthday in script like that. And then the person's name, happy birthday. And, and then we have a nice card. And then we can just erase the pencil line like that. And that's it. Perfect. Okay, I hope you like this. So this answers that question about creating a, uh, a mat and a border around your paintings. And you can do this for any size paper from very large formats to smaller formats like this. And then you can create as much as you want. And then now we'll get into the main uh, portion of our video. <clears throat> now th this is something where, um, this is a, a local um, clock tower where I live in Fairlaw, New Jersey in the United States. And this is a, um, you, um, we just saw this in our introduction video. I'd like to give a shout out to Thomas Clark. He's a uh, filmmaker. He created me uh, some really great introduction videos recently. And this was one of the introduction videos we did where we were at this location painting on, uh, you know, on location. And uh, he did some great videos for me. I hope you enjoy those intro videos. And uh, so this is the, the painting I was working on, on location in my local town. A beautiful clock tower and building along our, uh, the main street in our town of Fairlawn, New Jersey, in, in the USA. So here I created this painting and we're going to try to, we're going to actually do something similar on this. We'll just do a smaller version and this might be like a card, maybe like a small gift card or occasional card. So we'll zoom in a little bit here and we'll kind of discuss how we're going to get this uh, interesting uh, look on our, our painting and how we're going to get some of the angles and so forth. So here when we look at this main portion of this painting, we, we notice there's a, if we simplify it, we have a shadow side over here and the light is coming from this side of the painting, from the, from the right coming this way. So if we take a um, marker and we say the light's coming from this direction over here. So this painting, we can consider this um, um, painting uh, into the light. So what I did is I started in the shadow and then I worked towards the light. And that is a really nice pleasing effect because we know on the light side it's bright sunlight coming from here, from this side. So we can paint our darker colors, our darker tonal values first on this side of the painting. All the way down to this car down here and in the trees and the so all the way up through this painting, this is all the shadow side. And we can see the blues and the purples and the shadowing. And then over here is the light side, where the light is uh, raking across the scene. 
So what we'll try to do is, this is more of a, um, a vertical, we're gonna, a vertical painting. We're gonna do maybe more of a landscape feel for this. But we'll try to get the same idea here as we, uh, as we approach this. And again, we're gonna think of maybe, this might be like an occasional card, a thank you card, a birthday card, you know, something that we can do for fun. And we have this matted off again with tape. And you can see here, we'll zoom in. Okay, we zoomed in pretty good. Um, we have this taped off with a decent border here of about an inch. So this is about an inch here. And then the sides are about a half an inch. So that's one inch here for this uh, part of the uh, tape that we have taped off, the border for the bottom edge, and then this is a half inch over here, like that. And the same here, half inch, half inch. And this is the bottom. For We have one inch there for the tape. That's all we need for right now. And then we're just going to have some fun. We're going we're to work on the, the drawing now. We'll, we'll get our pencil and just do a real simple um, drawing. So again, here is the drawing. You can actually take a photograph of this or you can uh, pause this on your electronic device if you wanted to. Um, but we'll just go through it. And this is the... Now, now here's another great, great tip. Um, uh, I think as artists, we, we all sometimes get a little bit, uh, um, <clears throat> we sometimes all struggle with angles and things like that, which is very, it's very easy to, to become like uh, unsure about an angle or something if we're sitting in front of a scene or we're looking, working from a photograph, something, you know. Something like angles and, and drawing is not an easy thing. It takes a long time, and even the best of the best artists will sometimes struggle with angles and things like that because sometimes when we get tired and we're painting and drawing for 15, 20 minutes, our concentration starts to go, and then we just kind of want to keep going, and that's why it's good to take breaks. If you can take breaks, especially if you're doing a very intricate scene where you're trying to figure out angles and things like that, Definitely try to t give, take breaks every 15 or 20 minutes while you're working on your, your artwork and your paintings and drawings. So here, this is um, acetate, and I suggest everyone get, get this, and it helps you with your drawings cr incredibly. So here, this is the um, acetate that I use. It's a Duralar .005 clear film. And Duralar is the company that makes it, and it's, it's acetate. And this plastic is phenomenal. You can take this and you can hold it out in front of you if you're sitting in front of a scene, or if you're looking at a photograph or a painting or anything like that, you can drop it on top of your painting like this, and then you can draw, you can draw the angles like this. And then all you have to do is just remember to hold it straight. So you could actually make a level line on the top of it. So you could say this is your level mark. So we all know how to hang a picture straight on the wall. So all we have to remember is this is the level mark. Like if we're hanging a picture on a wall, we just keep that level mark. And then when we hold this up in front of us, if we're outdoors painting, or if you're just gonna put this on top of a painting, you just keep the level mark level with your painting or your drawing, wherever you're copying from, photographs. And then you just make sure that's level and straight. And then you just do your outline. And then you can use a larger piece. This is a very small piece I trimmed. You can, uh, the, uh, the Duralar, the Duralar uh, acetate film. It comes in really large sheets. I buy it in like 24 by 36 uh, inch uh, pads. They come in large pads. You can buy them in smaller pads too as well, online, on the internet, or in art stores. And so now we have our angles. So now I have my angle here. And then we can just take our film and let's start up here. And we'll say, okay, this is gonna be the where the, the clock is here, just so we have a little, an idea here. So it's just a square 
in a circle. And that's the clock tower, and that's the side of the clock tower. And that's the roof. And the building's about here. So that's all we need to do. And then once we do that, we just lift like this. And we put our pencil underneath the drawing and we just get an approximate. Okay, that's the circle where the clock is. Like that. Okay, and then we just carefully underneath like that. Okay, so that's the angle there. Angle here, down to about there. And then it starts to trail this way. Okay, that's pretty close. And then like that. All right, perfect. So we use this plastic with some Sharpie marker to get our angles. And then we just transfer it by holding it on the paper carefully, starting at one spot and then just lifting up and transferring the marks just to get us, you know, get us pretty close to the angles that we need. And that's it. Perfect. And so let's uh, continue on here. Let's And you can also change things around a little bit. If you start drawing this on your paper and you want to lift some pencil lines, you can just... It's just a guide. It doesn't have to be perfect at all. Okay, and then I'm just working my way around. The uh, clock tower, the very top of the clock tower. Now the reason I left the top of the clock tower off of this painting is because it's got really intricate, difficult um, angles. And I've, I've been to this location many times to draw and paint this in my local town. And every time I do it, I always struggle with the top of the clock tower because it's got a very odd shape to it and it really throws me off most times and I have to sit there and erase and redraw. So now I just figured, you know what, this I can zoom in on this picture and sort of just zoom in on the areas that I want to paint and I can leave out other sections and that's fine. And I hope everyone, as an artist, you'll do that. You'll, you'll customize your artwork to suit your own needs. So here we're doing that. And then we're gonna we're gonna create our roof line here, and then we have the okay. Now these these types of things with the uh, markings, this is uh, we can always um, we don't want to let this distract us at all. In that case, we can get a little bit of um, some of the uh, office um, whiteout on the uh, whiteout tape like this here, and then we can just white this out. That was bothering me a little bit with the lines, with the uh, black uh, ink and stuff that we had drawn in. So this is just something where you can you can do this just to. Or you can go over it with more tape if you want, but... Okay, and then w this is our roof line here, and it's a beautiful slate roof. Okay, and then I check my angles on my picture, and I notice that the... And this is something where if you're out in the field and you're pl in plain air and you're painting, or if you're even drawing, you can always take your reference material, whatever it is, if you're looking at an electronic device, um, a photograph, anything, you can take your your pencil and you place it on the drawing, you know, the drawing or the painting or the photograph, and you just line things up with your pencil and go, okay, the edge of this top of this clock tower up here, the edge of this is right about here, and there's a roof, small 
dormer that comes out a little bit. So we'll, we'll, we'll try to get that same idea down here. So here, the dormer comes out about there. And we just check our angles, just like that. And there's another dorm, dormer there. And we'll just kind of leave it like that. And a window there. And there's some trees over here. Perfect. Okay, can, can, we we really had a, an easy time of drawing this because we, we used our acetate with our Sharpie marker. So if everyone can think about this, if you have uh, sometimes a difficult time drawing any, any subject matter, doesn't matter what it is, if you use this acetate and you um, overlay this on whatever you're working from, photographs, you can even do it on a computer screen or uh, anything of that nature, or you, even if you're outdoors and you're looking at a scene and you can hold this up in front of you and get some angles, you know, to, to find angles a little easier, and then you just transfer it down onto your to your artwork, to your to your drawing. That That's a huge help for, for everyone. And I still use this method because I, I, again, I struggle too with angles sometimes. Angles can be very, you know, if we can, if we can really get this exact when we're out in the field or if we're working from photographs or so forth, it's better to get it quite exact than try to really, you know, s sort of guess at it because, you know, angles are very important, especially with architecture, like if, we, if you're doing architecture or buildings or anything like that. So just that, that's another key thing to remember. Um, sometimes architecture, like buildings and so forth, and houses, things of that nature, um, cars, vehicles, those type of things are very, very... Um, exacting with their the angles so if we can capture those angles pretty exact we're, we're better off it'll look much better in a painting so and i've i've also traced on a, a number of occasions where i've had where i've done paintings for people and, and so forth all right let's start painting here and again our idea is let's paint from the shadow into the light so the shadow side again we said was over here on the left side and this is the sunlight coming from this direction so that's the sunlight from over here coming this way and as simple as that we'll get some shadow colors purple that's mineral violet ultramarine violet french ultramarine blue cobalt blue let's mix all our blues in here we can have some uh, cerulean blue. And then we'll also work in some greens, sap green. Uh, it's an old clock tower, so it has like that old copper feel with some uh, weathered copper, which has got that green color to it. So we'll try to capture that here too. Some for Viridian. Okay, let's uh, put in some gold too, some yellow ochre. Raw umber. So here I'm laying out all my colors in my palette, just so I kind of get the feel for what colors I'm working with and I'm looking at my painting again. Here, we're re this is, I'm going to use this for my reference, my actual painting I did on, on uh, location. And we can see that we did, we're going to try to replicate, you know, the, the golds, greens, some blues, the shadow side, the purples and the blues over here. We'll, we'll do some uh, burnt sienna. There we go. And that looks pretty good. And then we have the same kind of repeating colors in the tiles. 
on the roof here. These are uh, slate tile roofing on this building. Beautiful slate tiles. Very uh, ornate building, very rich. So we're gonna put this across from us again. All right, let's start working into this. We'll get some greens here. The uh, clock tower clock itself, the, 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 the dial of the clock is white. So we're gonna leave that white, maybe a little splash here. And then some purple and blue for the shadow side. Like that. And this is just very, well, let's have fun with this. We're just gonna, I'll go straight into my colors sometimes. Sometimes I'll just put the colors in the palette to, to get the color selection I need. But then I can go straight in here, right into my colors and right to the paper, not necessarily always having to use the palette. So you can use your palette as like a um, as a piece of paper if you're working out some colors. You can put your colors out on the palette, and you can also use the palette too. As we go, and hey, let's get some greens in here for the clock tower, and some burnt umber up here, and raw umber over here a little bit. Olive green. Okay, and we're working again. The light's coming from this side, so I'm going to lighten up this over here a little bit with some tissue. I just took a little bit of tissue and lighten that up. And I'll darken up this side. This is the shadow side, especially over here. We're going to work our tiles. And then for our tiles, just small dash marks. That's all we really need here. Small little indications of tiles. And we just get our happy colors, mix them all up. Here's where you can just mix all your colors to make our tiles. And again, the light is to the right, shadow is over here. A little bit of cadmium yellow. Okay, that's the light over here to the right. Shadow is sort of, so we're creating a, a fun idea of painting into the light. We're shadow to the left, light to the right, and we just keep going that way, trying to keep that in mind. There we go. Mixing lots of different colors you can see here for my tiles. The tiles are a, a greenish blue and there's some reds mixed in there too um, for the tiles, like some reddish tiles. So I just keep working the different colors. I think the only really I'm trying to get a with the tiles, the tiles are sort of like this. If you can imagine, they're, they're in a brick pattern. So what I am trying to do with the tiles is have that brick pattern. So it's like everything is working on a brick pattern style like that. Versus just, this would look a little odd if we just kept doing this. See, that would look sort of not 
too pleasing because the real actual pattern of and I'm just going to continue on with the brick pattern we were trying to replicate that brick pattern we did a little diagram here of the brick pattern which is having each uh, brick offset so th those are actually tiles on the roof so we're just using the this pattern with the tiles on the roof they're uh, slate tiles we're, we're offsetting each tile like that in a brick pattern versus just doing it like this So we don't want to do that. We definitely want to keep it with a brick pattern as they are on the actual roof. So that's something where if we see that and in, in we're working on this, pro, you know, this painting, we want to make sure we capture that. This is a lot of fun. Again, the light's coming from the right this way. So we're painting from the shadow side towards the light. And we you notice I'm leaving some lots of white paper here. Let's let's leave lots lots of white paper. That looks really good. I'll zoom in a little more here. Now the here we're going to go for a brick look so we're going to make some of that brick color burnt sienna and cadmium red and let's do that let's do a brick color here then we're going to do a shadow let's go with some mineral violet purple color and some French ultramarine blue, and we'll do a little shadow underneath the uh, the roof line there, and that gives us a nice shadow look. Like that, <clears throat> and we can use this over here too. And again, we're painting into the light. Let's remember that here. Let's have fun with this. It doesn't have to be exactly like real life you know we can pretend a little bit so here I'm just gonna splash a little bit and um, pretend that we're we're painting into the light the lights coming from the right so we're gonna leave white paper where the light is and uh, and we'll some shadowing over here And then some more brickwork over here on the side. A little bit of shadowing underneath here. lights over here so let me <clears throat> take some tissue occasionally 
just to lighten things up a little. And I also, since we have a lot of green up here, I, I do want to put a little bit of green in this area so that we don't get that we odd look where there's different kind of colors and they're not all. So we always try to add a little bit of repeating colors throughout the painting. And then over here, more shadow. And then we can add some No worries if you find you <clears throat> want to change something. You can lift a little bit of paint. Warm and cool everywhere. Let's mix warm and cool together. Let's not get too spotty looking with just uh, warm or cool. Let's always mix warm and cool together. Okay, we'll do a little bit of um, some trees here. There's some interesting tree line type feel. Just a little bit of viridian green to uh, Okay, now the fun part, we move up to a little larger brush. So we'll move up to a little bit of a larger brush. This is a Da Vinci number eight. We'll wet the paper a little bit where the sky where sky is, and we'll do a nice, simple, free sky. No worries. Cerulean blue and a little bit of that mixture there. A little bit of French ultramarine over here. A little bit of viridian. Yellow ochre, just a little bit of that. And then just, we could blot up a little bit of the water if there's too much water on there. And just sort of work it down, the painting. And there we have it. A nice simple sky. We blot up some of the water here and there. If there's too much water, that. And we add some sky color right over here on the cobalt blue, cerulean blue, and that just gives us that feeling that there's some sky over here right to the right of the top of the clock tower and that looks pretty good and we'll do a little bit of uh, maybe there's like a pine tree here we can do a little bit of uh, or an evergreen or a pine tree we can work on that a little bit but I did want to actually do a little bit to the For the clock tower, let's be very quick on this. We're not gonna fuss over details. We're just gonna go quick. I'm just gonna make some quick lines. 
and some dots and just pretend that we're adding some details to the clock tower like that and that's all we need to do there a little bit of sharpie marker in here Nice evergreen, evergreen color, French ultramarine blue, sap green, a little bit of burnt umber. This has to be really dry. It's not quite dry yet. Let's use the blow dryer. tree here. Um, we make sure we tap some paint off the brush because we want to, we don't want too much paint on the brush so we tap our brush on the um, tissue once we've gone into the paint supply to get our color. And that gives us much better control of the um, paint. And here I'm just doing a nice feel of a pine tree. Again, just quick, knowing that the pine trees are kind of straight and then the sticks are just pretty much even. They don't go too much this way. With pine trees, maybe a regular tree, we're looking like this. Pine trees are more straight. So that's all I did is just quick getting the idea of a pine tree, which is more, the branches are more uh, ver uh, horizontal and then when we're looking normal like regular you know maple trees or so forth the branches are more on a 45 degree angle like that so that's all I did here just keeping them more straight and then maybe at the top they're a little more angled like that and maybe another happy uh, pine tree over here Perfect. And then we can uh, we'll take a look and see. We put that beautiful uh, tape on here, and that gives us a nice finished look for our matte look. This is fantastic. We can put some writing over here in the sky if we wanted to for, a, you know, a message or something like a nice, uh, um, you know, happy birthday, um, happy new year from Fairlawn, my hometown. Plenty of room there. Or we could write something in the, in the um, this bottom section here. 
So this makes a great gift card and so forth. And we did it real simply, mixing lots of colors. We used all the colors of our palette pretty much. And we painted into the light. We started in the shadow side and worked over towards the light, which is coming from the right. We left lots of white paper here and uh, we have a nice, uh, really good effect here of a simple scene captured with some watercolor, pencil drawing, and of course we used our acetate paper, acetate film, plastic, to uh, get our angles so that we have a pleasing uh, composition here. All right, everyone, thanks for sticking with us here. We got through this. Not always a simple painting with architecture, but I know you can do it. Go for it, try this out a few times. You'll, you'll be surprised it's not too uh, difficult with a little bit of um, plastic and some quick uh, reference lines to uh, capture that uh, beautiful architecture like we have here. All right, we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.